So let's go back to poetry. You said poetry was your first love. Do you, have you ever published? Have you ever written and spread it beyond, uh, or is it is it private? I, so when I say poetry is my first love, it's because that's how I be, I came into the creative industries. It was that and theatre. Mm -hmm. um, poetry. I have collaborated with a number of other artists mm -hmm. um, and written. Uh, poetry in terms of collectives so there was something called the Koroga collective yes. and what we would do is if you are if you had images you would upload them onto uh, a, a website mm. and then if you're a poet you'd write to the images and mm. then you would upload those onto a blog mm. so this is way at the beginning when blogs were the way that we communicated mm. Mm. so I am published only in as far as through those collectives but maybe in the next couple of years I'll be a published poet. But even that is publishing yes. because wherever we sit now, people consume uh, works of art through social media and all that. And you don't need actually to publish a book. But there has to be something said about uh, books. And I think a lot of us need to write books. Yes. Because books actually have longevity. Yes. Whereas social media can be very temporary mm -hmm. and very quick to consume, mm -hmm. books actually have a lifespan, a, long, a longer lifespan than, um, than blogs or tweets or anything of the sort. And even though that's how we consume sometimes creativity at the moment, mm -hmm. books actually are the things that are remembered. So if, if we hope that you Are you going to write your own book? about your experiences. I'm sure they're fantastic they're experiences. Yes, yes. For sure, I've always been mulling over it for some time, but sometimes <laughs> I wonder, do I include all I know or what? I you, you pick a theme, you pick your most important lessons and you write that. At least, let me write first of all of the people I've met. Yes, At least I'll give, you a, I'll give you a chapter. G give me a whole chapter. In fact, give me two. But... <laughs> <laughs> But what did I say? I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you as the researcher. I would just say that I met this lady, Wamboi Kolimo. She had a dreadlocks, then all of a sudden the hair grew. Yes. From bald to... Yes. Transitioned. Have... Just huh? like life. Does it mean... What does it mean when you change your hairstyles? So I did an installation called Akili Ni Yuele. Yes. And in Akili Ni Yuele, I tackled the issue of beauty, African beauty, and specifically relation to hair. Yes. And different people have got different weights yeah. when it comes to their hair. Yeah. I particularly have got no great weight when it comes to my hair. It is just, it's like my elbow. It's something else that is growing. <laughs> it's there. It's, it's just there. Yes. But for society, you know, people will be like, you know, don't have dreadlocks because you are a drug dealer. Yes. Get a weave because you're tameable. Mm. Don't cut your hair because then you look like a difficult to manage woman. Mm. And I've explored this in Akili Ni Yuele. And what was the reaction and perception from the audience? I think with much of my artwork, what I enjoy is people who come into the space and they interact with it and it reminds them of things. Remember I said that I am interested in memory and how people remember things and yes. why they remember those things. Yes. Yeah. So Akili Yuele allowed people to come into the space and have conversations about why they do what they do with their own hair mm -hmm. and how that presents themselves, how they present themselves to society mm -hmm. and what society's expectations are of them. Mm -hmm. So it starts with hair, but then it goes deeper into why does society expect this of me? So it starts to question societal norms, mm -hmm. which, you know, we don't often sit down and discuss. You know, we consume things quickly, but we don't discuss what is our society, what are our values, what are our beliefs. Mm. So I understand when you say that hair does not, to you is, that's why you come with Akili Ninuele. But when you met my good friend Bobby, you had a dreadlock. Yes. Then all of a sudden you had the bold, I was like, uh-huh. Yes. Uh, did Bob tell you shave it off? No. I was asking, did this man tell Baboy shave it off? No. I'm now the husband in this house. No. In fact, I think that would be something trivial that my for my husband to tell me to what to do with my hair. <laughs> um, I, like I said, it's not it's neither here nor there yes. for me. And you know, if I want my hair long, I want it long. If I want it open, I want it open. It's not that it is symbolic of anything specific. Yeah. So if 
I, I think we go back to the jazz festival yes. and uh, the, uh, the, micro, uh, the Bob Colimo uh, Center. Foundation. Foundation. How, uh, is it, what, what is Foundation doing apart from jazz? Okay. So the Bob Colimo Foundation works to unlock creativity. Yes. Uh, Bob was very big on the arts. He was a painter, Fantastic, as yeah. he was a musician yes. as well. And so we focus on the arts and music and look for opportunities for growth in those two areas. Yes. I think a society without arts and culture is a dead society. Yes. Because arts and culture, like I keep emphasizing, allow for expression. Mm -hmm. They allow for questioning, deeper thought about why we're here and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And culture then becomes the vessel to which we remember who we are. So culture then feeds into history, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it tells about our society. So the Bob Colombo Foundation is focused on the arts, mm. on music, specifically jazz and classical. Mm. Jazz and classical because those are foundational music forms. Mm. If you can learn to play jazz, you can learn to play classical Classic, and yeah. the standards, mm. then you can improv out of that and play pop music or rock music, whatever it is. So we're trying to invest in the music industry mm. in as far as creating the, the standards, mm. so jazz, classical. Mm. Uh, BCF, which is the Bob Colombo Foundation, also works on, through a theme called Business for Good. Mm. And through Business for Good, we look at ways in which companies can be sustainable. Mm. And this is along the ideals that Bob had, which is that companies should focus on people first, mm. not on profit. Mm. So it's people, partnerships, and then profit afterwards. Mm. Because if you focus on people, mm. then you don't have to worry about your margins. If people buy into the company, if they understand that this product is good for them, then they are invested and they will remove money to pay for that particular product. Mm. We also believe that businesses of the future are not just about profit. Mm. Businesses of the future have to take people into account. Mm. You have to invest in the future. So you cannot uh, degrade the earth. You cannot have oppressive work policies because you break down families. Mm. We look for opportunities in which businesses can network with other maybe larger companies mm. and ways in which they can both influence each other so that their plans are not for the immediate profit but are for future investment. Okay. So you, you say that um, one, of the, uh, one of the things is just to create uh, music and make sure that people, uh, class of jazz is big. Bob was featured in a song <laughs> by one of the gospel artists. I really laughed at him when he was singing. <laughs> but he did, he could play and he could, that song by Jimmy Gaeta, have you listened to it? Yes, the Furry Furry. Furry Furry. Yes. He, he sounds like a mzungu in it. Nini Bob Kali Moor, Nime Toka Maju. Nina Penda God, Na Nina Penda Kenya. And because of that, ah, ah, fully fully dance. Ah, ah, fully fully dance. Yes. Furu Furi dance. Yes. This is basic. I was like, that's what well, you can't. He said, that is the best I can do. That's the best he can do. <laughs> you see, you, he was you, such a fantastic character that he could appear in a music video and... That was a gospel video, actually. Yes, and, and, and actually did take himself so seriously. I am a CEO and therefore yes. I must be in a suit. Yes. He was open to the fact that he can actually just be a person and just yes. be a human. Yeah. And again, you will see he was most human in the places where there was expression. Yes. So in the places where there was arts or yes. places where there was music. And, um, uh, and in Amatatu, I was shocked. Or in Amatatu. Yeah. In Amatatu to Dandora, my goodness. Exactly. You know, the thing about being a CEO, yes. which I think you know yeah. too, at least I hope <laughs> you know too, <laughs> is that it's a title yes and yes you're at the top of it yes people are like hello sir yes. but in a blink of an eye it can also disappear Go. so Completely. who's the person who's left behind it's the it's whatever you are whatever your vision what you how you relate with people that's really what matters yeah, yeah. are you able to key back to that person before yes. people were like yes sir 
Because if you're not, then you're lost. Because that time will come. Yes. CEOs have tenure. They always have. They, they always have tenure. come down. Yes. And when you come down, always then you're not down. going to get the same phone calls, the same favors, all Their of that. Your phone goes off for some time. Yes. Completely. So you have to be ready for that person then. And the only way to be ready for that person then is to look for opportunities to remind yourself of that person then. It's not to lose yourself in the title. Okay. So the art. Mm -hmm. yeah, as an artist, we appreciate your work. So this Bob Colimo uh, Foundation, we, we hope that it will succeed beyond Thank you. any expectation that it will bring us more good vibes because we lack proper musicians. We are grounded on skill. I hope that this will give us an impetus of having musicians who can play instruments because the majority of Kenyan musicians do not play instruments. They do vocals only, but are very poor in instrumentation. And that's the difference between American or South African musicians, because they're multi-talented. I hope this one will give us a chance to create a pipeline of talent where artists will grow, where we'll have an artist who we can have a saxophonist who can play to a level of an international standard. You know, actually we... In the jazz community, there are brilliant, brilliant yes. instrumentalists, and also in classical music. We've got the Nairobi Orchestra, which yes. I was very lucky to attend a performance two weeks ago. Mm. And they were performing pieces that have been composed by Kenyan composers. Mm. And the level of depth in the pieces that they were performing is astounding. Mm. So we actually have that. It's just that we may not necessarily have the infrastructure that supports the exposure mm. that they would need to international um, audiences, for example. Mm. Um, it, it really hurts me, for example, that our, we only have one major theater here in Kenya, the Kenya National Theater. This is 60 yes. years after, after independence. independence. And that was built by colonialists. Yes, and refurbished by yes. um, our a, a corporate. And uh, yes. And you know, what happens to our stories? What happens to yeah. Nyakeo and the, the Oga and all of these other stories that we read yes, that should true. be performed, that yes. should be retold to our children? Mm. How is it that we have lost such valuable storytelling mm. to the point where we don't even know who we are? Mm. So I think there needs to be more investment in the arts. Mm. We need a national art gallery. We don't have a national art gallery. By the way, which one? We have the Watam, which is private. Wa we don't Wat have a national Watatu. art gallery. We don't. We don't, actually. We have a museum. Yeah, we don't. But the museum is the museum of archaeology and entomology. Yeah. But we don't have a museum of, uh, of art. And like I said, art becomes culture. Yes. And if you don't archive your artwork, then you lose aspects of your even culture, our, documentation. Even our friends from Banana don't have an, an art space there. Even our, sorry? Our friends from Banana Hill, art, you know the people, yes. most of them come from Banana, by the way. Some of them do, yes, 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 yes. Yes, most of the renowned artists yes. are from Banana. Yes. I, I don't know why this connection with Banana, yes. there, but most of them I know from there. I think it's, it's better that if we could have created an attachment area around there, it would have been much easier. Because they are like we need a centralized archive yeah. of art. Mm -hmm. And that's what a national art gallery would do. And I always have wanted to imagine that we could have 70% of all government buildings, mm -hmm. the walls are reserved for Kenyan artists. Yeah. And that a policy says that 5% of all new buildings must have Kenyan art. Can you imagine what that would do for the arts industry? It would create a big, big... It would create labor. Yes. And then that also has a domino effect because yes. the money doesn't just sit with the artist, then it's going to be used it's further it's down the line. Mm. And what most people think is that artists would be youth. Yes, it's one of the largest employers mm. of youth, mm. but a lot of people pay school fees through artwork the sale of artwork. Mm. They have families through the sale to of support, artwork. Yeah. And they document what's happening in a time. Once you move from that time, if it is not written in newspapers, because that is where we now archive most of our history, yes, yeah. 
unfortunately, and I know I speak to somebody who, you know, runs a media house, yes. it cannot be the sole way in which we remember history. It cannot just be newspapers, it cannot just be Television. textbooks, yes. school textbooks. Yes. Because the chances are you will have a skewed perspective. Mm. Whereas art offers divergent views on a particular time in history. So if we are not archiving our artwork, mm. if we are not investing in that aspect of ourselves, we leave ourselves to politicians to dictate to us mm. what is our past and, and what is our identity. Is there an active group of uh, artists who come together with one vision or it's decentralized. No Kenya, everything is So there is an association called the Association of uh, Visual Artists and Collectives, AVAC. Yes. Recently established, and it works to bring artists together yes. as a community to advocate for the things that we need in policy, mm. but also to look for ways in which we can cater mm. to the needs of artists. There's, it always blows my mind how banks up to now have not realized that artists may be uh, a viable clientele mm. where artwork can be an asset it is an asset yes, yes. that the bank can hold mm. and provide a loan to an artist mm. Mm. where insurance policies can be sold to uh, groups or collectives of artists mm. and i recently did some work with kcb bank mm and have helped KCB Bank increase their collection of artwork from the 1990s, mid-1990s to mm. 2010. Mm. In the 90s, it was collected through Gallery Watatu, which mm. was Ruth Schaffner, yes. uh, Ruth Schaffner's gallery. Mm. But KCB understands, for example, mm. the value of art. It understands that it's not just buying art pieces, but it's buying works that could rise in value and become assets, and therefore, can be insured and can be counted as part of the uh, balance sheets. Yes, it can become part of revenue. Part of revenue. Yes. If there are examples of banks that have had problems, mm. but have had art collections and have been able to cash in by selling the art collection in order mm. to keep themselves afloat. Afloat, yes. So it's not just something that people sit in a corner and just do. It actually has real economic value, but we have to look at the structures that support that. But you are not, the artists were not included in Talanta Hela. I didn't see any artists in that team which was unveiled by the sports ministry. Tell me why. I don't know. I just saw one fashion designer and that one had to fight to be included. There was a bunch of TikTokers and let me not go there. But anyway, why were they not included? I don't know. I would like to know <laughs> as well. If you can interview somebody and ask them. We Please did do. ask. We did ask yeah. why, because it was skewed, and that was that's what led to uh, it being disbanded. Yeah. Because we had an interview with some collectors of vinyl records, for example, and we were explaining that even the producers themselves of what we call River Road or yes. Riverwood yes. were not part of the whole thing. So it was skewed towards people who are much on the social media and not the real people who really do the real work. You know what I feel would want to happen? The Ministry of Arts, Sports and Culture has got a long history of things that needed to be done mm. and have needed to be followed through mm. with. Mm. One of them being, I, I don't just talk blindly about the National Arts Gallery, mm. Burumbi. Mm. The Vice President, had Burumbi, yes, I know just had a dream of a National Art Gallery. Yes. Yes. and actually worked towards getting land for that. Mm. So since that time, till now, it has been implemented. Mm. I think while there is time to innovate within that ministry, mm. there is still a lot of stuff that is in the pipeline mm. that should have been implemented because they're easy wins. Mm. There is no reason, for example, that we shouldn't have community theatres, mm. community theatre groups. Mm. There is no reason, for example, that we shouldn't have centralized music recording studios. Mm. So that if you want to come, it's a subsidized price, you record your music. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why 
these policies that I'm saying, 5% of all spaces in new buildings be assigned to art, mm. or 2.5% of all uh, productions, movie productions, must use music that is scored by a, a Kenyan, Kenyan musician. Artists, yeah. All these are simple wins. Mm. So it is my hope that for the upheaval that the arts and ministry culture sometimes gets, because we, we often get new ministers, that there is stuff that can be worn and done, and that can be easy wins that can secure all of us who are creatives. But, but most of the creatives also need to have one voice, an umbrella body which can champion their rights. I think that lacks a lot. We do. Too we, we have those. And it is not, really, it is not the job of the umbrella body to force policy. Mm. It is the technocrats in the ministry that should be creating the policies. Mm. We come in to advocate. Mm. We come in to say, okay, this is what we want or this is how we want things done. Mm. But these are, like I said, simple wins, policies that should already exist. Mm. so that what we're doing is cleaning up mm. those policies. So, and we do have those umbrella bodies. There are several umbrella bodies. But are, they, are they active or some of them are as dormant as Dodo in uh, a, a Mombasa? Number of, a number of them are active. Like I said, AVAC, uh. which is the Association of Visual Artists and Collectives, is yes. active. Yeah. Uh, we have them. But the blame cannot lie on them <laughs> advocating. Partially. Partially, yes. Partially. But majorly, mm. the fact that there are easy wins that are not being picked up yes. and should have been picked up mm. from Burubi's time, from Independence time. Yeah. So who is, who is your favorite uh, visual artist? Apart from yourself, of course. <laughs> Actually, I'm not my favorite visual artist. Um, that's a difficult question because I love so many artists and admire them. I, Beatrice Wanjiko. Yes who is a painter, yeah. uh, Paul Onditi, who is also yeah. a painter, yes. Dennis Muragori, uh, Cyrus Kabiru. No. I could go on and on and on and on. <laughs> okay, we want only three. Three? Yes. Can I say, and here's a plug. Yes. KCB's art collection is amazing. Not mm. because I helped put it together, mm. but because it marks Kenya's artwork from 60s. the 1960s yes. to 2000, and, I'd say 2014. Fantastic. And in there, you will find your top three. Everyone will find their top three. So it's difficult for me to say who my top three are because it changes with season and it changes <laughs> for each time that I see their artwork. So you do not have a specific I don't one. have a specific one, but I say start there with that collection. Go visit it, see it, yes. and um, use it to document or to mark out Kenya's art history. Definitely, I'll, 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 I'll go and watch and check KCB collection. Please do. It's scattered all over Nairobi. Whether it is Upper Hill or Kencom, it's in different branches. You but know what we actually need is just an art gallery. It's just that simple. There's the idea of working with KCB was to create a collection so that one day KCB can load its collection to the Kenya public. So what we just need is an art gallery, a national art gallery. Cool. Yeah. As we're ending, what do you remember about Bob? Every night when you go to sleep. What do I remember about Bob? I think largely it is his generosity. Mm -hmm. And generosity not in terms of how much he gave to different projects. Mm. It's his ability to see what needs to change about the world. Mm. And I miss that aspect of being with somebody who was such a visionary. Mm. That's what I miss about it. I miss, um, I miss somebody who believed in the good of the world mm. and worked towards that to remind people that they, they can be and they are good. What else would you say that uh, Bob been influenced around your life? Um, you know what I hope he did? Mm. And what I hope he did for many of us Kenyans mm. is he showed us the power of us coming together. 
and what I hope is you know, he didn't just land here or at CEO. He had his own trajectory. He mm. worked his way up the ladder. Mm. And when he got to where he got to, mm. he didn't just misuse that power. Mm. I hope that for anybody who is looking at themselves, they can see themselves in him. And they can see that it takes, it takes a lot to be on the right side of history, mm. but it's not impossible to be on the right side of history. Of course, it's not impossible yeah. if, if you put, but you must have faith. You must have, I think you must have honesty, yes. you must have curiosity, yes. and you must have generosity. I think those are the three things. You must be honest with yourself. Yes. You must be honest with yourself because your ego can take you to a place where you then become selfish. Mm. You must be curious, which means that you must be willing to learn about what's happening around you, what's happening in your world, why certain things are the way that they are, how you can make them better. And you must be generous because only in generosity can you understand that you are not the only person on this earth, that there are other people on this earth, mm. and that your job is to be part of that community of human of humanity yes. but you can only be that if you're generous because generosity requires vulnerability thank you thank you Amboy. i think you've captured it well but i thought you'd include faith because in kenya you need a lot of faith to succeed what do you mean by faith believe in yourself yes but you can't believe in yourself if you're broken by the system. But the system, we are part of that system which breaks the law every day. But why? Why are we not curious enough to find out how we can be not part of that system? No, we'll get into a debate. <laughs> yes, we can get into a debate. <laughs> Faith has been misused significantly. We yes. can believe ourselves out of a situation. We can continue to believe hard out of it. <laughs> But if we're not making the right actions, yes. then faith is useless. You're without believing. Action. Without action, faith is useless. Without action. Yeah. That we have it. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you no, so you, much. You should, you should close by telling us you're watching the History Makers. Okay. You're watching History Makers, and um. I'm one boy, Colibor, and I am happy to have had this conversation. Thank you. Does that work for you? Come on, <laughs> 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 <laughs>